We think deflation is uh, the greater risk. And I know that's not uh, a very uh, widely held point of view. In fact, I, I don't think I know anyone who has that point of view. Once these uncertainties are out there and it's clarified, there's an inventory correction, China's uh, uh, hitting, hitting uh, economic growth, then I think um, inflation and interest rates are going to come down fairly dramatically. Um, and the fear will shift from inflation or stagflation to deflation and or uh, recession. Uh, and we think uh, crypto prices, uh, a new asset class, uh, will uh, continue to move up. Everyone is extremely worried about inflation. Just yesterday, we covered renowned investor Chamath Palihapitiya, who had this to say on the topic. I'm very concerned about medium term inflation. And Chamath is not alone. Investing titans such as Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio and Michael Burry have all voiced their concerns about medium term inflation. It makes sense. Never before in history have we had such high levels of money printing and monetary stimulus. The obvious conclusion is unprecedented inflation as a result. Yet one investor stands alone. Contrarian investor Kathy Wood is standing by her deflation thesis, and in this video we will go in depth on why Kathy Wood thinks everyone is wrong. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we will go over why Kathy thinks Bitcoin and crypto is a great hedge no matter where you fall on the inflation deflation debate, and we will also cover some of the most recent on-chain Bitcoin data. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. We think deflation is uh, the greater risk. And I know that's not uh, a very uh, widely held point of view. In fact, I, I don't think I know anyone who has that point of view. Uh, but you've heard some of the cyclical dynamics that we think will take inflation down. Um, and we think secular dynamics will as well. Good deflation, that associated with um, disruptive innovation. Uh, and the statistic, I'm not sure if I mentioned it on the last call, but that you know, blows my mind is uh, artificial intelligence training costs are dropping 68% per year. Think about that. Uh, that's massive deflation. That's a huge undertow. Uh, and, um, and then the other side of disruptive innovation is creative destruction. So those companies who manufactured earnings by leveraging up to buy back their shares um, are, are probably didn't invest enough in innovation and are going to see uh, the results, we think, during the next few years. They will have to service their debt by cutting prices. Um, many people raise uh, a, a couple of indicators to say, well, how, how do you deal with this as an explanation, uh, given your view on deflation? Rents. Yes, rents are going up. Um, but if you think about it, where's the great migration taking place? It's taking place from the very high rent areas of the world. So uh, New York City, uh, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, California, tri-state tri area. And the migration is to lower cost um, uh, places and with lower rents than in those big cities. So I think that mix effect is, is, um, is going to help. And then the other one is on wages. Uh, wage inflation, if you look at average hourly earnings, I think they were up 4.3% uh, uh, in the last employment report on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, how do you overcome uh, embedding 4.3% percent into the inflation rate. The way you do that is with pr productivity gains. And we believe that productivity gains are going to pick up uh, uh, significantly as uh, our disruptive innovation technologies sweep through. And we think uh, the changes are going to be massive during the next five to 10 years with S-curves feeding S-curves feeding S-curves and uh, leading to tremendous productivity gains. Uh, so that's a win-win. Uh, wages going up, 
productivity going up uh, will, 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 I think, on a company by company basis, um, depending on their pricing power, um, they will uh, either see share in the gains with uh, higher margins, or maybe their heart margins will, will get hit if uh, the pricing power is not there. Uh, once these uncertainties are out there and it's clarified, there's an inventory correction, China's uh, uh, hitting hitting uh, economic growth, then I think um, inflation and interest rates are going to come down fairly dramatically. Um, and the fear will shift from inflation or stagflation to deflation and or uh, recession. And uh, we will revert to very low nominal GDP growth rates, probably two to 3% range. In that context, our uh, average revenue growth for our strategies is north of 25%. And uh, I, think, uh, I think the market will wake up uh, uh, once again to uh, revenue growth rates that are 10 times that, excuse me, 10 times that of the, um, of the economy. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. So Kathy Wood is sticking to her guns and is standing by her deflation thesis, despite everyone else thinking the opposite. Her strategy to profit, invest in companies with revenues growing at north of 25%, and she thinks it's just a matter of time before the market wakes up to these hyper growth companies. Now, another asset class Kathy has been extremely outspoken on is cryptocurrency. Kathy Wood is also betting heavily on Bitcoin and Ethereum as it has a unique feature that sets it apart from every other asset class. It acts as a hedge in both an inflationary and deflationary environment. Here's what Kathy had to say on her outlook for Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, and we think uh, crypto prices, uh, a new asset class, uh, will uh, continue to move up. It's very interesting to watch El Salvador. El Salvador has deemed Bitcoin legal tender uh, and its president uh, tweets almost every day about this uh, initiative. Uh, so far, 2.7 million out of the roughly 4 million eligible um, have uh, have uh, downloaded their Chivo wallets uh, with $30 worth of Bitcoin in it. Uh, what's interesting about that 2.7 million is only 1.2 million people in this country of six or seven million people uh, have checking accounts. So uh, here's another example of DeFi, um, not even letting uh, banks uh, penetrate uh, that highly uh, into a country like El Salvador. It's also interesting to learn that uh, today or in this or in this week sometime, uh, the government started mining Bitcoin using energy from its volcano. Uh, and we're wondering if they're going to actually uh, include Bitcoin in their reserves, which we think would be a very smart thing to do. And the reason it would be smart is we're beginning to see the dollar's strength hitting emerging markets. Um, a lot of emerging markets have dollar denominated debt. So when the dollar goes up, it takes that much more to service the debt. Uh, from uh, converting from their currencies into do into dollars. So um, uh, this is often a harbinger of risk increasing in emerging markets. Uh, and uh, very often uh, the, there will be runs on the currency and uh, and um, as as uh, as their populations try to shift into dollars. Uh, and uh, so El Salvador is not going to have that problem this time. And we think other emerging markets are, are going to um, uh, start uh, taking its example. Uh, many people wonder, why are we positive on crypto, um, especially Bitcoin, which is mathematically metered to top out at 21 million units. We're somewhere between 18 and a half and 19, I think now. Um, and, and and yes, that's if if there were an inflation, that's a beautiful hedge. 
But uh, it, when you're talking about emerging markets and, and or you're talking about a situation like 08, 09 here in the United States, uh, when there's a crisis, counterparty risk uh, is uh, h- high and, and rising. So to have a backstop like uh, Bitcoin, w- we think is an excellent insurance policy. So Kathy is still very bullish on Bitcoin and the crypto space. Now, just to highlight some recent on-chain Bitcoin data, some data pulled from Glassnode. This week, we have been pointing out how throughout September, every cohort of Bitcoin holders have been buying Bitcoin. Wallets holding from just 0.1 BTC up to wallets with up to 1,000 BTC have all been buying. So where has all this Bitcoin been coming from if the price hasn't been moving much higher? The answer can be seen here. Bitcoin has been moving off of exchanges very rapidly as all holders are stacking sats. Supply shock October is well in effect. Anyway guys, hope today's video provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next video and as always, have a great day.